everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm gonna to share with you some home updates that are super easy and DIY beginner friendly. I have to share these with you guys. They are trim boards that are already pre-measured and pre-cut. It makes doing a project like this so easy. So if you wanna see how I turned our dining room from this to this, then just keep watching. So I share these on Instagram and the video went absolutely viral. I cannot believe it. It's almost at a million views and I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to install these on this wall here using glue, tape, a level, and a laser level. Everything is super budget friendly, including these considering the quality, the size, and the fact that the cut is already done for you. So let's get started. All right, so here's the tools needed for this project. First off, you're gonna need some trim. You can go the easy route and buy the trim that's already measured and cut for you, or you can buy trim individually and cut it yourself. You got a tape measure here, a level, um, a caulking gun. We got a laser level, vinyl gloves. These are just gonna be used for whenever I'm applying the adhesive so I don't get any on my hands. Gorilla Glue adhesive. I'm also gonna be using some of this fast dry caulk and some tape. So before I get started, I did wanna share something with you guys um, when it comes to this project. So I won't be painting this wall a different color. This should be a really quick, easy project because I'm painting the trim the same color as the wall is currently. So it's gonna be just a really simple change that makes a huge impact. At least that's how it is in my mind. So that is the game plan. However, in the future, I do wanna paint this wall a little bit more of a moody, maybe warm color to kind of complement the fireplace, which is black and has a lot of warm tones in it. I'm trying to incorporate more warm tones in my home, as you can see from like the gold mirror, and then I have more like wood toned gold frames. I'm starting to incorporate more into our house. I love a good modern look but i also love antiques i am very drawn to a i don't know a very collected look so that is my plan with our home is just to slowly but surely make these little changes that make big impacts so we're gonna get started <laughs> um i am going to hop up on the ladder use my measuring tape to kind of get an idea of where the trim is going the top piece of trim is going to go I am a little uncertain about how high off of the trim off the bottom I'm gonna go, um, but the plan is to do three large boxes, the center one being a little bit bigger, and then I'll have small boxes at the bottom. So I will put like a picture here on the screen of what I'm talking about. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get up there and just kind of mark a few uh, marks with some pencils and get my laser in place. Now, I do wanna mention that this is the first time I've used this particular trim. There was a lot, a lot of mixed reviews when I posted the video on Instagram. Some people said that they absolutely hated it and some people said that they loved it. And then some people were just excited to see me use it and let them know my honest opinion. And I will definitely be honest as I'm going through this project. Um, some people said that the trim was too heavy to hold with the adhesive. I don't see how that's possible considering these are like light as a feather. So I don't know. Um, it's only one way to find out though. <laughs> so I'm gonna get everything lined up and leveled out. Um, what I'm gonna do is start with a line on these, like along the top. So I'm gonna take this laser level, tack it at the top right above the mirror. I am gonna leave all of this as is right now because I'm actually working around that. So that's what I'm gonna do. You know, I think my biggest concern was either if I should do the small trim at the top or the small trim at the bottom. That was the one design dilemma I was having because um, I could easily, no, I'm definitely gonna do it at the top. So we're gonna go like this. This is how they look like open, by the way. So see how the angle is already cut for you? It's like good to go. All right, so up here on my ladder, I'm just getting my level in place. I actually have to play around with this quite a bit to get the right position. I knew that I was going to raise the mirror up a hair along with the buffet cabinet. Um, so I was trying to keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that I wanted to have a crown molding at the top eventually. And we are eventually going to take down the barn door, I believe, to include an arch into the kitchen, which I will be talking about that just a little in a little bit in the video so stay tuned for that let me know what you think i include some photos of like my idea there um and i would i really really value and appreciate your opinion on that so um stay tuned for that 
But anyway, like I said, I was just kind of playing around with the measurements here. Trying to, well, I guess I was kind of eyeballing it. I wasn't actually measuring it out just yet. At this point, I was just trying to visually see where I wanted it, and then the rest I would measure out later and kind of mark the center and stuff like that. So everything was even. Um, so yeah, I'm just taking this masking tape right here. I was actually struggling a little bit, so I hollered for my son to come over and help hold it in place so I could tape it. And I was super thankful to have his help. And it actually just happened to be um, that morning he stayed home from school because he didn't feel well. So um, he actually helped me out quite a bit on this day. He started to feel better at this point. It was right around like noon when I started this project. So um, he started to be my little helper. It was really sweet. So I was super thankful to have him there. Um, hanging out with me while I tackled this project. Okay, I got my first uh, piece of trim open. This is the one that's gonna go in the center because it's wider. These are the 35 inch ones. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my gloves, get some tape ready and in place so that way it'll help hold until the adhesive dries. Now, one thing I forgot to mention here at this point is that I already measured out the wall and got my center point. You can't see it here on camera because the mark is really small, but I just took a little highlighter and I marked the center of the wall and then I marked on the center of the trim so that way I knew exactly where to place my trim. And I know I had a lot of mixed reviews whenever I did share my video on Instagram about this trim being too heavy and the adhesive not being strong enough to hold the trim in place and that the trim kept falling off the wall or sliding down. And I'm not sure if it was just luck or if it was this glue, specific glue I used, but it held so good. I had no issues with it sliding at all. Um, I did kind of hold in place for like a couple seconds to kind of like you know, really press it in place. And then I would tape some areas. Like if I used a really long piece of trim, I would just tape it in place just to make sure that it didn't fall off the wall. Um, but I had no issues with it, thankfully. However, later on in the video, I decided to try the nail gun. And once again, on the Instagram video I shared, I had a lot of people saying that every time that they used a nail gun, the trim would split because it's like a PVC. It's not a wood piece of trim. It's like a plastic um, type, but once again, I had no issues using my nail gun and I actually wish that I would have used the nail gun for these other trims just because in the case that I ever decide to change the wall again, <laughs> I won't have to worry about damage. The biggest issue whenever you are using any type of glue, like liquid nails, just any type of glue on the wall is when you go to rip out whatever it is, it is going to cause some major damage. So just keep that in mind. Boom. All right, so right here is where I almost made a mistake and I'm so thankful I caught this before it was too late. So I went to go add this other long piece of trim here to the side and I realized that the laser wasn't able to shoot a line across the top because th this trim was in the way. I'm so thankful I noticed this because I would have had a heck of a time trying to get the other trim at the top level with this one that's in the center. So I actually went to go stick this one on the wall and that was when I noticed that the laser wasn't going across the wall and I was like, oh crap, let me not do that. So you can see there was only a few couple spots of glue and then I jumped to adding this one at the top. So don't make that same mistake I did. Make sure that you put all of your trim across the top first before you add your trim to the sides just to make sure that you have that laser going all the way across. I probably could have easily just flopped the laser to the other side, but I had such a good line going and it was so level, I didn't wanna mess it up. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, I found that it was a lot easier to get these, these pieces on straight first and then add your sides on and all you have to do is just use the level on the sides to make sure they are even everything else was just super easy the hardest part is getting your measurements right like where the center is and kind of playing with the idea of the design you want that's truly the hardest part everything else is so easy so this is the part where I actually switched to using the nail gun to finish up the trimming job. The nail gun is so much easier. However, it is it's an expensive tool. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one and you are in the market for one, I'll link this one below. I think it's great. It's the Craftsman 18 gauge um, battery operated nail gun. You can put different size nails in there and it's great. Um, I use it for pretty much every DIY project that I do and I 
100% recommend this one. It's been through a lot too, <laughs> a lot. I've dropped it multiple times and it's just super strong and sturdy. Not that I recommend, I'm just saying I'm all about quality and if I can find something that's gonna be durable when accidents do happen, that's a game changer for me. So anyway, I'm gonna finish up just nailing these trim boards in place using the level as I go to make sure everything's nice and even. That is the key when it comes to doing these types of jobs is just making sure everything is level because if you don't, you're gonna notice. ran out of nails just adding some to my nail gun real quick <sighs> nailing it is much easier um i mean if you are on a budget and you don't have a nail gun like this then i would definitely recommend just using glue but if you have one of these use a nail gun it's so much faster and a lot less messy <laughs> I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet or not. I may have forgotten already, but I will have these trim boards linked down below that I used along with the measurements that I decided to go with for this wall. Um, like I said at the beginning, the center panel is actually a little bit wider than the other two just because I wanted to have a bigger space for the mirror. I wanted to make sure I could frame out the mirror that I had and who knows, I may regret this down the line if I ever decide to redecorate the space, <laughs> but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, for now, I absolutely love the design I chose and I think it works great but I would definitely keep in mind that okay baby um sorry <laughs> I got the kids home and a lot of times I just squeeze in my voiceovers whenever I have a free moment and I thought this was a great moment but clearly it is not everyone is being so loud in the background so please just ignore it um but I was trying to mention that just keep in mind whatever design you decide to go with is kind of a permanent design, especially when it comes to wall treatments. So just try to think long-term decorating, make sure it's something that you're gonna be able to work with. Okay, 
no lie, that took about an hour and a half to get these in place. That is so good. I am obsessed with these. I don't care what anybody says. This is the way to go. Um, so much easier than having to cut each one myself. I have to make sure the measurements are right. I'm in love. So at this point, we got all the trim work in place. I love how it looks. Now I'm gonna go in with the caulk and I'm gonna go ahead and fill all the seams. So I like this one personally. This is the DAP um, Alex Fast Dry. Dries really quick. You can paint it fast <laughs> and you can throw it and it won't break, I'm just kidding. Um, but I just cut my tip at an angle and I'll show you guys how I do that. Okay, so to put it in your little caulking gun here, you have this part here that slides out and then as you're squeezing it, this is what happens. See how this little metal piece pushes? That's what's pushing this to create the caulk to come out. So basically, you're just gonna press this button here and, sorry, I'm having a hard time sitting here trying to explain. You push this button, pull this back. Mine's just all disgusting because I get stuff all over it. Anyway, you just slide this in here like this and then you're gonna put pressure on it with the trigger, but don't tighten it all the way because you want to cut it before you tighten it or else it'll just like ooze out. So, basically, I'm just taking these little cutters here. You can use scissors or a razor knife, but you're going to try to cut it at an angle. I find that cutting it at an angle is just a lot easier, and that's about how you want it. Let's see if it'll focus. A lot of caulking guns have a little spot on the edge that you can use to cut, but mine doesn't, so I always get comments about that. Like, you're... Um, caulking gun has that. I, mine doesn't. <laughs> Not all of them do. This is an older one. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. I find that the trick for doing this is to have a wet towel on hand. Paper towel, baby wipe. I used to use baby wipes all the time back when my kids were little. I use them for everything. Um, but now I just buy these really inexpensive um, microfiber cloths. They come in like a huge pack of like 30. And I use these for all kinds of projects. So that's what I'm using. Mine is wet. And you'll see how I get this done. See how easy? Doesn't it look so much better? <laughs> A new place, a new home For a while, let me feel alive Nothing to hold me back Take my time, just enjoy the ride A new man passing by Life is good, best I've ever felt if we are just super rough in our house or if this is everyone's house but my the trim 
not only just the baseboards, but the door frames and everything are horrendous in our house. Like no matter how many times I clean them, scrub them, they get scuffed up so quick. Maybe it's because we play with the scooters in the house a lot <laughs> or the dogs. I don't know, but I just feel like we cannot keep our baseboards decent. So I'm going to repaint the baseboards right here. I will eventually do the rest of the house. I just like to work in sections. I don't want to take on too big of a task, but I taped everything off and then I did go ahead and call Kasim where the tape was. That way when I did peel the tape up, it was a nice clean line. That's like a little hack if you didn't know. Um, if you put tape down, just put a little bead of caulk along and it just pulls up seamlessly. Um, and then I just finished up painting the trim here that I just added. The color of our walls is called Agreeable Gray by Sherwin-Williams. Now the key is to get the eggshell finish. I feel like this color in the eggshell finish looks the best. I've tried it in a satin and I've also tried it in a flat finish as well as a semi-gloss and this eggshell finish is my absolute favorite. Um, at, for a while there I thought I wanted more of a glossy wall so I actually repainted this wall at one time in the same color but just in a semi-gloss and it was way too shiny and it almost made it look more gray and i'm assuming that's just because of the way that the lighting is bouncing off the floors and the walls and everything like that so just keep in mind every paint color is going to look different in every home it's always a good idea to get a sample i hate spending money on silly things especially like paint samples but it will definitely save you in the long run Alright, so now it's time to just start putting everything back in place. I did choose to leave everything as is just because I already really liked the way it looked. However, I will be making some adjustments, so keep watching. You'll see I actually add more trim in the dining room. Good morning it's the next day i um just finished up redecorating this space again i just basically put everything back the way it was uh, because i like the way it was decorated before i really just wanted to add the trim work i love it it's so pretty especially i feel like it looks like even better in person like last night i couldn't stop admiring it especially whenever the sun went down and the shadows were kind of casting on the wall you can like really see all the trim work it looks so pretty at night but um yeah, so I was thinking, um, I really love how this looks. So I kind I want to continue the trim work throughout the house in the areas where I can add it because I feel like the one thing this house is missing is like that charm, you know, like the, the trim work charm that you see in older homes. And that's what I, I love that look. Um, and this house originally when we purchased it was just a plain empty canvas basically and over time we've slowly but surely made changes to bring more like warmth and stuff in here um, and I think we've done a great job in our home I'm really really happy with everything I just feel like the one thing I could bring more of is like some more character things that you don't see in a home like this you know what I mean like a basic just plain house so I'll include like a couple video clips here of like how the house looked when we first purchased it and obviously as you can see a lot has changed um still got a long way to go I originally planned this was like supposed to be when we purchased this house it was supposed to be a our forever home I think we thought it was going to be because y'all gotta remember I came when we moved here from Florida we moved from a single wide trailer that was only a two-bedroom um, so moving into this house felt like so big to us 
but obviously over the years it started to feel kind of small the yard the neighbors we thought we wanted to live in a neighborhood with a smaller yard but then as we we're living here we we're like dang we really miss having property and we when we lived out in georgia we were on five acres so there was we had neighbors but they were not this close you know and like i said you don't know until you live somewhere what your actual wants and needs are um and that's just the honest truth so purchased this house we thought this was going to be like our forever home quickly realized this is not our forever home and or like forever spot you know like location wise and stuff and unfortunately with price increases inflation and all that this has now become <laughs> at this moment in time our forever home so i want to do things to it that i would do to my forever home although this might not be our forever home who knows if prices drop and we get the opportunity to move then we will but until then the goal is to make this house as cute and full of charm as i can um so that's like the goal for this year is just to bring some more character to the house and i'm going to do that by using paint trim work fixing things mistakes i've made as far as diys go along the way um trying to make our house as functional as possible so that's the goal um i do have a pretty large plan for this kitchen space i i have actually been meaning to talk about that in a video but i just really haven't had the opportunity and i would love to hear your thoughts on this so please feel free to chime in let me know your pros cons of what you think about this idea so um, I'll include a couple pictures here, but my plan is to kind of have some separation between the spaces. So, so anyway, plan would be to do like an arch up around here. Obviously it'd be very tall. Um, our ceilings are a little over eight foot. They're like eight foot, like one inch or something like that. Like they're a little more than eight. So I feel like we could definitely get away with like a little bit of an arch and this space would all still be open. You'd still be able to walk under it with no issues. It'd still be six foot, at least six foot. So anybody who's tall, I mean, the only people I know that are tall are my brothers and they can duck. <laughs> I'm totally joking, but I'm just saying, I think it would work and I think it'd be really pretty. And I kind of like put together like a little template of like what I kind of want. Okay, so either way, I definitely think some type of wall would be really beautiful and also i did decide what i'm going to do for the backsplash i'm not sure on what materials exactly that i'm going to use but i'm definitely going to be using some type of stone i love 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 a textured look in the kitchen i just do i had a lot of you comment and say don't use any type of texture because then it's hard to clean um which i totally understand however our the back of our like the backsplash i guess that space it never really gets that dirty i mean we don't cook a lot of sauces that splatter and stuff like that and just wiping them clean um is plenty enough it's not like we have to like scrub scrub them so i think it'll be okay and if i seal them properly it should be all right but i definitely want to do some type of stone but i want to do the stone to where it goes like up around here and it'll go all throughout the kitchen it's hard to see because everything's so bright and my house is a complete disaster but this is what happens when i work on projects I knew this was going to happen. It happens every time. Like I, I neglect everything while I'm working. <laughs> but anyway, that is the game plan. Um, and then I'll show you on this side here. So see, this is where the barn door is. So the wall would actually go up here along the doorway. And then bloop, like this, come up. And then it would arch back down right here. Also, I did decide I am going to paint this door the same color as the wall to help it kind of blend in better. Um, so I already have paint out for that. I think we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Um, this is a closet door that leads to our HVAC system. So it has to be there. Um, I actually built that door out of an old closet door. I just kind of created it. I think it'll look a lot better if it's the same color as the wall so it don't stand out like a sore thumb. Um, so we'll paint that. And then I'll add the trim work to this space here and get that painted as well um and that should be it for today you don't know how to keep on trying it shows something's changing in me it shows now i'm highly breathing
After getting the closet door painted, I went ahead and switched out the greenery in this vase. I really love this greenery and I actually added a few more stems just to kind of fill it up a little bit. Um, and now it is time to add the trim by the window because I felt like it was just missing. It just needed something over here. So I added the trim work really quick and then I'm going to show you guys some overviews on how the dining room turned out. Alright, so here's just a quick reminder on how this space looked without the trim and honestly there is nothing wrong with the way it looks here. It is just as beautiful, but like I mentioned, I did want to add a little bit of charm and character. So here is the final look. I am absolutely in love with how this space turned out. I think it looks so cozy and warm. The trim work is just exactly what the space needed. And I am totally inspired by this project. So I do want to continue the trim work throughout the main living space. And I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. Also your thoughts on the kitchen design that I have kind of in mind um, or any suggestions you have for that space, please feel free to let me know. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today and watching today's video. I'll see you all in my next one. Bye y'all.